So my name is Chris Waterhouse. Uh, good afternoon. Um, welcome to the first webinar of 2019. So what we're going to be discussing today is commercial gift packaging, the, the gift packaging market, and we'll explore from a structural and um, sort of supply chain perspective, digital and personalization technologies available to us, how we're delivering excellence in the service, the quality, um, hopefully highly cost effectively. Um, we hope that's what you're hoping to hear about, and we uh, we sincerely hope that you'll enjoy this this little journey through our little experience. So, in a little bit more detail, um, what gonna, we're going to be looking at today, um, what's gifting, our definition in this particular context, um, a little bit about personalisation because that's all part of the gifting process, the unboxing experience, um, e-commerce, how that links to an unboxing the personalisation piece, and some of the challenges around that. Um, talk a little bit about digital, um, agile fulfillment, um, which is driven a little bit by artwork management. And then we'll try and look a little bit to the future and some other opportunities we're seeing out there in the marketplace um, and getting ready for the next gifting season, really. So why are we going to talk to this? Um, we're working quite widely in that space at the moment. It's a really important area. Um, lots of value added um, situations for our clients. Um, and they're living our pragmatically novel engineering, novel engineering solutions. Um, and from our perspective, you know, we pride ourselves being in a timely way, cost-effective, um, innovation, and and pragmatism. Really important area. Um, sometimes there's going to be compromises, and we try and make the very best of all the bits and pieces that are happening with our with our clients. So that's getting under the skin of the client, as it were. So, what does gifting mean? It's our definition. Um, in, the, in this context, the industrialized environment, for want of a better expression. So, it's we believe it's the process of delivering a special, momentous, memorable experience to the recipient. Um, and the gifting means so much to so many. Um, it occurs at a point of celebration. So it's passed from one person to another, um, usually a specific person, but could be, a, I guess, a dog or whatever. Um, <laughs> the current trends, I suppose. The packaging should therefore be personalized. It's, it's a, it contains special words, messages. Um, and after all, when we deliver something that's delivered in a conventional way, there is a card, there is a message, it's handwritten, someone's taken time over it. It's something special that we want to deliver to, 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 from us to a loved one. So the qualities of the present, they should be something that the giver is proud of. It should be something that has quality, is memorable. So we'll try and see how we can deliver those bits and pieces. So. We'll start about personalization, which is a start point for us. Um, it brings the individual, the event, to, so, so sorry. We all want to be different. We all want to be unique. We all want different things. And as I look around these images, we see, you know, a Ferrari there, pretty, pretty rare beast on the street. Um, but still, somebody wants it to be different. They want it to be special and to be unique. There's a surfboard there specific to the individual to the event in question and this is christy whoever christy is i'm guessing she's a surf rider in the picture um some nike trainers you know being different customized items to be honest i didn't buy them i did customize them online um the price put me off a little bit but there you go and then we have the cosmetics and the beauty field the core of the the discussion today bespoke colors combinations for different skin tones personal preferences Eyelashes type, how long do you want your eyelashes and, and whatever girls. All unique and bespoke potentially for that person. And finally, up on the right there, the Oreos. This was a personalization program run by to create a bespoke gift pack for a loved one. Um, run by HP um, about uh, 18 months ago, I guess now. There was massive take up and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And as an example of how the gifting and the personalization world can add value to the simplest of products. Okay, so again, part of all this is the unboxing experience. So we shouldn't underestimate the value added area and the benefits of the unboxing experience. The whole online retail experience, it's, it's all connected with the unboxing, the premium image rather than the wholly underwhelming brown box, brown paper, some polystyrene chips or whatever approach. And Apple's really a past master at this, exceptional stuff. And even a market on eBay at the moment, as I understand it, to repurchase the packaging for your iPhone, for your Apple Mac or whatever. Again, if you look at the high-end drinks industry, 
The whole exercise of unveiling the contents, the bespoke wood, the leather, always says premium. Even down to the to the, the lower end of this of this of this range of products, there's always a quality carton which can be customized. Maybe a tin purchased from the online gift shop, there is the opportunity for custom print, be it in the label on the carton or whatever. And then there's a the ubiquitous vloggers. Um, getting the product on the PC screen, into YouTube and all those other bits and pieces, getting that endorsement is a guarantee of publicity that historically would cost millions of dollars to achieve. So instead, a few clicks, a celebrity vlogger endorsement. I've read somewhere that a young boy became the highest earning individual on YouTube last year, earning millions, unboxing and reviewing toys and games. To be honest, has the world gone mad? The key, however, is that the internet drives traffic and sales. You must be web and internet savvy, savvy, offering that USP, offering that point of differentiation, and that can be done by the customization. If we look, however, if we get it wrong, you get something like this. This is something that arrived in our office not very long ago. Um, really completely rubbish. I mean, what a waste. Not great at all. And that's the sort of thing also that ends up on the uh, on the internet as a how not to do it kind of story so e-commerce inexorably linked linked to the whole gift and personalization space and it faces a number of challenges the e-commerce world online retail has to deliver the special piece lots of different shapes and combinations which clearly is a problem in the world of e-commerce difficult to manage using the conventional supply model and that's why people are looking at it in a different way. In gifting, we need the excellence of offer, the quality, the beauty, the right first time. And for the e-commerce world, the packaging needs to be robust. It needs to go through that supply chain and look at the return rates. You know, at the end of the day, the return rates are incredible. You know, so 30% of products ordered online are returned compared to the normal shops. Clearly, it's a little bit different when you're customizing, but it is a an example of there will be returns if there are damages so i want to tell you now a short story my dustbin my kitchen bin a little bit bigger than that to be fair this is a picture off the internet but the bin was of a similar brand let's say major e-commerce site well-known brand expensive bin okay it arrived next day very happy amazon prime all fine and dandy few stickers on it but it was the retail packaging system the corner was a little bit deformed on the bin on the on the uh, on the packaging i thought well maybe it took a bit of a bang but unpack the bin from the box clear evidence of the size of the courier driver's foot definitely his boot taking a lump out of the size of the bin stainless steel bin with a major dent completely ruined off it went back to the stop and to be honest it looked a little bit like this not so far off it wasn't that bad but it uh, was certainly didn't cover the fragile piece. And you know what? Most disappointing. So, so which industries do gifting? You know, we've, we've sort of, um, there's, a, there's a fair degree of focus um, on the cosmetics and sweets and whatever. And to be fair, I haven't seen detergents, vacuum cleaners being gifted yet. Um, I feel that might be a recipe for divorce. Um, I do know someone, however, bought his wife an exercise bike for Christmas because she asked for one. So, you know, all to everyone else. But seriously, broadly speaking, an awful lot of engagement is to do with a focus on the traditional gift areas, the cosmetics, the food, the drinks, the alcohol, spirits, those sorts of things. It's not a surprise. At the end of the day, added value, if done well, creates significant margins. The online gift guys understand this. That's why not but why not so many of the major manufacturing retailers? Is it just because it's difficult to do? Is it just awkward? I think that's the truth of it. So I'd look, I'd look at this uh, this particular example. And a bottle of scotch, date of birth, Times newspaper. Um, fantastic. Really nice gift in a nice box. And you know what? If you look at the margins on this, they're significant. The newspaper, you can buy that off the same website, to be honest, £25. The whiskey is probably about £30, a bit of print, nice and easy, and off you go, a customised item. This is real value add with special gifts and customization. It's really good. They're the same for packaging components, the point of sale, rapid turnaround, we can add value there. But what's surprising, 
as the world has taken a lot of time focusing its activity. As a consequence, there isn't the um, appetite in a lot of businesses for undertaking this type of custom type packaging. Historically, I wouldn't have disagreed with that. Having said that, the now is a time when this capability is happening, it's starting to increase, and actually non-conventional approaches is starting to be incorporated into businesses. And after all, who doesn't love a special treat or gift? And to be fair, on the Christmas Eve, just in time, guys, we'll pay for that convenience. It will happen. So at the end of the day now, talking a little bit about the digital capabilities, how do we create the agility? So we've got print. You know, we can print pretty much anything now. Um, there's an example, um, digitally printed pack. There it is, already a go. Coca-Cola doing it, a variety of others. Platforms, very easy, no problem at all. You know, it's really easy stuff. Um, sorry, can you see that? And then we start to look at the bits and pieces around that. You know, we can, f we can look at all the different types of capability and the different surfaces we can print on. So we've got the back office though. That's a key part of this whole digital process. How do we, this, the, the old fashioned way of running um, huge approval processes into the back office doesn't work. Doesn't support the whole gifting and doing it batch sizes of one type approach. We have the print heads, the print, the digital CMYK. You know, we need the machinery. And the one piece of work that we're doing at the moment, which is a little bit different, um, print on demand, digital online. That's CMYK, fully variable text with the equipment installed or the print heads effectively installed inside the converting machine. And that's not at the converter. We can do it there, of course we can. But it's at the end user, the repacker, the packer. Those places where the true digital capability is being understood, developed, and off you go, you're into the gifting world for small batches. And finally, the delivery systems. You know, Amazon have pretty much sorted that. Amazon Prime, fantastic. What a system. Next day delivery in most places. Sometimes you get some damage, of course. But, and it's also brilliant for those last minute Valentine's Day gifts, guys, and that's in two weeks' time, apparently. I was informed today. So, okay, so for our from our side of things just talking a little bit more about the artwork um artwork management and the pre-press type processes automatic artwork generation that is now available to us change something in the databases in the background and the next print is formatted correctly through the templates accurate approved and doing the right thing there's no extended lead times because the templates the look the formatting and actually the database content is all sorted out nice and easily. We create these templates at the structural pack level, creates an environment where the management system can handle the approvals. It starts to give us a scale of the business, the understanding. An example, a small example for you, conventionally to change a small detail on a pack, perhaps an address. So to change the address, conventionally, you've got a thousand SKUs or something of that nature, you want to change the, the address, you have to open every one of those SKUs, every one of those artworks, have a look. Are we using that address? Yes, we are. Okay, cut and paste, drop it back in. And then it goes around the approval process. With an artwork management system, you get to a point where you can change the database, and the database just pushes through the artworks, and off you go. Auditable and giving us all sorts of process improvements, artwork changes much swifter, and the easiest of artwork approvals. You know, hugely important, hugely serious in terms of giving us control of that origination process. And that is a feeder to the E-type systems. Having that capability, you don't have to have it, but it is beneficial because these systems, these databases, deliver significantly into other types of system, which we'll talk about in a moment or two. Things like E-labels, things like um, instructions about ingredients and those sorts of things which as you start to customize and personalize for individuals you need to be able to control and deliver in a rapid way okay so digital print a little bit um flat form easy no problem at all shape forms no problem can be done and the digital process direct container as well can be done so we've got 
the flexibility piece through the digital digitization. I was recently at a print house where they had a bespoke book written and illustrated by one of their wealthier clients, to be fair, uh, wanted to create a book for their for their child for Christmas. Um, in fact, a group of children. The mother wanted a special book printing of a story that she had written and a friend of hers had illustrated uh, for Christmas. The best bit that the children in turn had a unique book and they had the lead role in the book. It was made possible by the use of digital print, short run binding and those sorts of things. The effect was fantastic and something to remember for years to come. So that was fantastic with the kids, really was. And then there is the finishing and the structural piece. Finishing structure. So there you go. This is this morning. Marmite. Ready for Valentine's Day. That's my jar of Marmite, if you like it. So we get to a situation where we can go and this is in flat form though. Special edition cat packs. The leader of the pack was Coke. Of course it was. And then it's the bespoke Marmite. All ready for the Valentine's Day thing. So you then get the flat forms. They can be done really easily. The Nutellas, the names, the Snickers those sorts of things. That can be done relatively easy as a hand assembly process in the Nutella case, or indeed if, if you want to just create a, a vast array of, of items. If you want to sell those on, you've got then a different, more manual handling type process. But the structural form changes the whole dynamic, and that's what we've got to deal with. They're the big challenges. So the Heidelberg Omnifl Omnifl Omniflame system, um, that's delivering all sorts of custom print, everything from suitcases to hockey sticks to bicycle helmets, motorcycle helmets, all the way through. So we can deal with that. But that's all about using a very expensive piece of kit. And do we need to do that? Going back to the pragmatism that, that, that we at IDI Pat are so proud of, you don't need to do that, to be honest. You can do all sorts of other things and achieve the same types of systems or same time outputs, the customization, the personalization, without dealing with it. And just to speak just very, very briefly about um, people have a digital prejudice, um, poor quality print, block nozzles. That really isn't the case for anyone that still has that prejudice. The problems are solved. Um, to put it in context, we've got a desktop photo printer here in the office. Same technology, effectively, CMYK. Costs hardly anything, but the quality is fantastic. Clearly, that is not a problem in terms of an industrial environment. Okay, so now, so the future. There's the history. There's the history. That's what we are. That was what arrives us all the time now. The ugly version. Expensive goods dumped in a cheap shipper with a bit of excellent seal air product, maybe some polystyrene chips. So we look to the future and we start to think, well, okay, how are we going to do something to custom bespoke packaging systems? How do we do thermoforms? How do we do those in a cost effective manner? How do we change the shapes when people want to change the contents of the of the packs? How do we do that rapidly in a digital way and maybe even with eco materials? Entirely possible and use capabilities perhaps in a different way to move the capabilities perhaps away from the manufacturers who do this for large volumes and that's fine and they have their place in the marketplace. Of course they do. But the old supply chain model can't support these needs of flexibility. So for this one, we have the ugly, the bad, and the good, okay? So as we move across left to right, clearly this is the wrong way for the Spaghetti Western. It is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's go the right way now just to correct that particular error. So it's the power of digital, clearly correcting things, making things work in the way that we want them to work. So, and how do we scale that, okay? So a little bit of a tiny case study, example case study. So Dell and Raquel, Dell and Raquel, um, for those of you that aren't familiar with fools and horses, um, Dell and Raquel are, there's Dell boy, a businessman, part of a TV comedy program. Um, they played market traders, often operate in the edge of the law. And Dell boy claimed he was a businessman, maybe not the CEO of a multinational. Raquel was his wife with Damien the devil child. Um, created a great set of jokes throughout the series, um, fantastic program. But anyway, so Dell decided to go back. Um, he bought Raquel, he wants to buy Raquel some some special, um, oh, sorry, I apologize. Go back on that one. Click over here. Okay, so he wants to buy a cosmetics gift set. 
Now the collection or selection for Raquel, it needs special packaging. He wants to make it right. He wants to make it look like the retail environment. So that involves the pretty box with the belly band, personalized message. That's all it's all about. But the contents themselves need something different. It, the combination is not an off the shelf gift pack. We can take it down the tissue and gifts route, a tip, uh, sorry, the tissue and chips route, but that's really old hat. Premium pricing needs a premium offer. Premium offer, what we do is deliver something very sensible. So we have to reflect that in the retail range. The retail range has a tray. It has a mask. And how do we do that? That's when novelty and innovation kicks in, where we're creating structural 3D packs that are one-offs and doing that cost effectively. And we'll come on to that in a moment or two. And something else, if the pack is unique, what about all the health and safety ingredients data? How do we manage that? That's when we need the artwork management systems where we can say, okay, this collection of items has got ingredients X, Y, Z, which is different from the other pack, which is one, two, three. So we use that, we're using the artwork management systems for very, very rapid approvals, understanding and collections, putting those together, the conglomerations, putting them together such that we can get to a point where we can deliver something that is bespoke, doesn't look like a bodge, and is a quality item as part of, um, as we did later on. We'll just flick through that. Okay, so, so the challenges. So we've got this batch size of one, batch size of one. You, something unique, something different. Every person is different. Um, and we mustn't forget that. So and we've got to maintain the quality. So the quality has to be with the print, with the decoration. And how do we control that? How do we maintain that? And that's all to do with the materials. That's all to do with, with the different pieces and the construction of the, of the packs themselves. And to be honest, it needs to be sustainable. It needs to be sustainable for shipment. It needs to be sustainable for the business sustainable in terms of the planet and the costs, the quality for the shipment, sorry. The quality needs to be great, the security, the accuracy, and all those things. But how do we do it? The cost of production. It's the use of non-traditional capabilities. And no one ever talks about flow wrappers doing bespoke type stuff. No one ever talks about the digital print or infrequently talk about digital print in anything other than the print processes. How do we do that with boxes, with cartons, with shippers, and so on and so forth? And personalized thermoform molds for the cosmetics industry. That's clearly impossible, is it? I don't think so, to be honest. Well, it's certainly not our experience thus far. And use of cutting tables and different technologies to deliver bespoke shapes in terms of foam, in terms of carton, carton board, all those sorts of things, corrugate, all those sorts of good things. What we're doing is using the capability that exists in many other parts of the business, the packaging industry, and moving it to a place where it can be delivering at very short runs and, and, and at the coal face, as it were. Okay, We can use all sorts of different things, different materials, and starting to look at how the structure is constructed. How it's delivered can actually make a big impact in terms of what we're trying to do to give that personalized offer. So the non-traditional manufacturing model, we're using the 3D printers potentially. We're using thermoformers, the flatbed cutter, digital press, small scale stuff. And at the end of the day, doesn't the space station make its own spares using a 3D printer? Yes, folks, it does. So why would it not be possible for us to print one-offs and those sort of things? Except entirely that the speed is limited at the moment on 3D printers, but it's getting quicker. Flatbed cutters, quick. Thermoformers, quick. Digital presses, no problem. Does that mean businesses move away from their core activities, become expert at other technologies and capabilities? Yes, it does, if the lead times need to be delivered. Haven't Amazon nailed that with the books printing? You know, they're an online retailer. No, they're not. They're going to legitimately call the printer now, amongst many other things, of course. So the opportunities, using smart technologies as well, not just about physical, but about the electronics. Using NFC tags, RFID, and smart barcodes taking us through to a world of communication, the ability to deliver e-labels, e-pills, e-communications to many, many other different areas of the business. And that gives us the personalized message as well. It could be the, the written text digitally delivered, but it also could be audio. 
scan the barcode and why wouldn't you get the message the uploaded file um from 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 Del Boy? doesn't have to stop at the point of physical items the reorder functionality great stuff amazon have got it down off pat reordering buying new things special offers vouchers instructional videos audio files all these things giving us ingredients maybe for those that are, are, are challenged from a literacy point of view people that don't speak the language in the country that they're in can't read the labels whatever it's all available to be delivered on a personalized and gifting basis providing that special special treatment that we all desire so getting ready for the next gifting season at the end of the day it's understanding the opportunities the opportunities that perhaps you don't really know what they are by leveraging the different technologies we can build capability platforms and develop that must-have product offer the new thing at the end of the day we all know in marketing the right thing to do is to be first in market we've got here we've got all sorts of pre-printed stuff in terms of bottles in beers and special beers and water jugs the cosmetics we've talked about we've talked about the oreos a little bit and and the smarter barcodes and using those barcodes and nfc tags rfid to link us to other parts of the business to provide that personal touch but on top of that just talking about the oreos where the where the value add comes in oreos apparently the pack that they were the, the, they were focusing on was two dollars 99 in the supermarkets the online cost for this bespoke pack, which was filled in, completed and coloured in by on, online on the website, was eleven ninety nine, with another shipping another four ninety nine, as I understand it. But that wasn't the, about the end of the value add story. So we got at the moment we've got sixteen dollars or so, seventeen dollars for a pack of two ninety nine biscuits. Okay, you've got to ship it, you've got to deal with the process. The average purchase of these packs, however, was two point eight units per order. So they weren't buying just 16 17 dollars worth of product they were buying 35 40 dollars worth there were added costs as i talked about before you know hp the packing those sorts of things but the social media airtime the special launches you can't buy that sort of goodwill very easily advertising be different show your business in a green light show you show your business that it's doing things differently all these things add up and that's part of the digital and the gifting story so just starting to wrap up now um we're very happy to work with you in and be in contact after the webinar to get your thoughts we're happy to rerun it if you'd like to explore it in a bit more detail for your specific business needs um understanding what gifting and short run strategies can be done can be delivered within your business and maybe start to explore the structural uh, side of the side of the packs and the, the linking all together and maybe come to industry events and let's grab a coffee perhaps have a chat about it LinkedIn on social media so just very briefly what we do as a business we're, we're all about solving products and supply chain challenges that effective design pragmatically engineered packaging and supply chain solutions that's what we're about and doing and delivering these things is really in our DNA as it were we were less than an hour from Heathrow easy to get around Europe we've been around for 10 11 years now um, with a lot of experience a lot of breadth within the team doing these sorts of things and running these sorts of programs for our client base so as a business as i say you know we're providing our clients with practical expertise especially support across packaging supply chain packaging and supply chain that's our interface and delivering solutions in that space that's what it's all about for us and our track record here's some of the people we work with um there's earl AstraZeneca, Syngenta, Wrigley, Moon Harvest. These are all folks that we work with. You know, judge us by the company that we keep. You know, we're, we're working with the big guys and hopefully delivering on a regular basis for them in these sorts of programs. So that's me. Um, please look, look forward to connecting and, and all those sorts of good things. Um, I do have very briefly a couple of questions. Um, Peter from the Midlands. Um, you've made a he said you've made a point about businesses moving away from their core activities any comments on this okay so fundamentally that's about um businesses perhaps a cosmetics business becoming much more of a packaging type business um at the end of the day it's 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 businesses change so so the short story we wrote letters using quill pens in the olden days then we had type letters by a great bunch of ladies in the in the typing pool. Sorry, I'm sexist that, I apologise. But it was typically like the case in my experience. Then we had computers, then we had email. And there were many stops along that way, but it was a continuous 
process of ev evolution, and I'm sure it will continue to, to change. And Bill Clinton apparently said, the price of doing the same old thing is far higher than the price of change. So we need to look at the change, we need to embrace it, we need to take it forward in, the, in, this, in this field. It's a very exciting area and adds a lot of value. Next one, we have a um, final question. Pascal from, um, from Paris. Um, you gave an example in cosmetics. Um, what was the structural technology changes we talked of? Okay, so the client was looking at providing some high-end gifting, obviously. Um, what we did with them and worked with them was reimagine the process of creating a thermoform tray um, in sustainable materials. Um, and the process of creating the cover mask to, to protect the thermoform tray, um, plus print on the belly band and, and, um, and the color apps. So we were able to deliver that through looking at some of the technologies that are about, customizing them and providing them with the back office, with the controls, with the, um, without giving too much away, the, the technologies that allowed them within their business to deliver that bespoke imagery for their clients they love it uh, they're very happy with it um, and as I say you know these are not off-the-shelf gift packs these are gift packs that are go to the website choose the gift pack just like Raquel and, uh, and um, Del Boy choose the combination and then put those combinations together in a way that is safe which is um, all the ingredients and information is delivered with it through the artwork management system and so on and so forth so, you know, they love it, um, great system, and, and hopefully uh, enjoyed by, by, by many of their clients. So I'll wrap it up now. Um, say thank you for joining us. Um, the website, or on our, on our website, this webinar will be out there in a few, uh, a couple of days' time. Um, if there's anything you'd like to follow up on, please be in touch. There's my details. Um, Love to be in contact, and if there's any other areas of interest you'd like us to talk about, maybe the web web subjects or, or subjects to talk about in a webinar, uh, happy to incor or incorporate them, or indeed to meet with you and talk the, talk of them more widely. So, uh, more sessions in 2019. Follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter feeds, and thank you for joining us again. Um, apologies for the slightly uh, slightly late finish. Um, have a great rest of the day. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much.